Hi, and welcome back to Epic Restorations. On our last episode, we adjusted the clutch pedal on the Model A chassis and took it for a drive. In the engine, it ran great. We drove it up and down the driveway a few times just to test everything out. When we finally pulled back into the barn and began to go through our checks, we found that the throwout bearing was snug against the clutch fingers. At least, snug enough that we couldn't move it with our hands. We knew that we should be able to freely move it, so something must have been wrong. After several discussions, conversations, and further research, we're sure that the pressure plate fingers just aren't set properly. And so today, we plan to pull off the transmission and prepare to set them right. Removing the transmission, it isn't a quick process, but it's certainly faster and easier with the body off the frame. We've got our hands full today, so let's get cranking. Once we removed our wooden bench seat and dash, the first thing off the chassis was the battery. The battery is pretty heavy and you don't want to drop it, so we always use a battery strap when removing it from the battery support. Once the battery was unhooked and pulled, we removed the battery support box from the frame. Next up, we unhooked the brake rods from the outside middle of the chassis back to the two rear wheels. The emergency brake lever is bolted to the transmission, so that came off next. We also removed the emergency brake lever rod to get it out of our way as well. Next, we removed the brake rod and the spring from the brake pedal. After that, George began working to remove the clutch pedal. After removing the tension from the clutch pedal, he used a flathead screwdriver and a little elbow grease and pulled the clutch and the brake pedal right off the chassis. Now I'm gonna keep it oriented the same way. I'm gonna put it temporarily back on here. Now this comes off, and then there's, this is an all important washer. You know, it's spring. Next up, we remove the muffler from the engine. It's a pretty simple process, 
Simply remove the no-nut exhaust clamp from the manifold on the front end and loosen the clip on the back end. No. From there, we move to the back end of the car. Putting the rear end of the car up on jack stands, we work to free up the back axle so that we'd be able to separate the transmission at the U-joint and pull it back a few feet and out of our way. The rear spring U-bolts hold the rear leaf spring into the cross member of the frame. We're going to replace our existing U-bolts as they are somewhat bent before we put everything on the chassis back together later. Next, we remove the front radius ball assembly from the bottom of the clutch bell housing. It's a little floozy. Notice that this was on the front edge. There's a notch in there. All right. Just like that. These just set up in there, don't they? I'll leave that alone. We're just going to leave this right alone, just the way it is. But we do have to pull the transmission back far enough to get past this. If we take it up and out, we'll be all right. After that, we began to remove the outer caps on the U-joint. Once the caps were off, we carefully pulled back on the rear end of the car and separated the U-joint from the transmission. We carefully sat it on the floor and we'll leave it there until we're ready to reassemble the transmission later. Now, see this has gaskets here and here. at all. Yeah, I put the, yeah, that's in gear now, see? Put the gear, I can't turn it. It's in neutral, spins freely. But no grease. So good thing we took it apart. All right, so to help us get the transmission off nice and straight, and more important, when we put it back on, I took two longer bolts, so we took take these two transmission bolts out on the top, here and here, and then I cut off the head of a three inch bolt, and I'm just gonna slide them into these same holes so that it gives us a guide to pull the transmission straight out more importantly, it'll go straight back on to help guide in the pilot bearing, the shaft and the pilot bearing. So I'm just going to snug them up just a little bit, not real hard or tight. They don't need to be, but I just I don't want them to wiggle because they'll, they'll be our guide. Almost there. There we go. They're just kind of snug is all I want them. Yeah. Don't, don't jiggle or anything. Now we can take the rest of our transmission bolts off and slide the transmission on. Nice and even. 
Once we'd removed the 10 bolts around the bell housing, it was time to remove the transmission. We're going to use an engine hoist to help us pull the transmission up and out of the frame. We'll begin by securing the transmission with a few ratchet straps to support it. It isn't overly heavy, but we want to be careful to keep the transmission as balanced as possible as we remove it from the chassis. With the ratchet straps tight and in place, we loosen the transmission by jostling it back and forth on the guide pins. Using the hoist, we carefully jostled and pulled back on the transmission along the guide pins until it slid free. If it's balanced, it'll slide back pretty easily. Once the transmission was off the guide pins, we carefully turned it sideways so that we could lift it out of the chassis. With the transmission out of the chassis, we now had access to the pressure plate and the fingers. Measuring the fingers as they are now, they clocked in at one inch, which explains why the pedal would not disengage the clutch when it was adjusted correctly. In order to correct this difference, we'll need to tighten the finger nuts to have a 5 8 inch measurement. But that's a job for another day. Join us next time as we adjust the fingers and put this chassis back together on the next episode of Epic Restorations.